Hey guys, I've been playing a bunch of Apex Legends recently and I wanted to really see uh, how I could rebuild their UI. Uh, so I've taken a screenshot of the current UI and uh, we've got a quite a futuristic, quite a techy uh, style here with a lot of greys and a lot of uh, like dull war themes um, and they're contrasted with high color tech. Um, banners and uh, the, these orange pop colors and these red pop colors that come through here. So there's the, this, this character in this background is um, rendered real time using their engine. So we can't rebuild that, uh, but we can rebuild these uh, UI elements to the side and um, just see uh, what it looks like in a sketch doc. So this is what we've got here. You can see, we'll start from this top menu you can see that these buttons have been made using a gradient uh, from red to nothing, just to build out that UI glow. Uh, and we're setting the, the type on here, uh, just keeping it as normal. And that is our active state. And then the next here, we have all these three buttons are our static state. Now, the font that we've chosen for this isn't the exact same as there's uh, that font is $32 and I will have a link for that in the description, but I unfortunately couldn't purchase it for this tutorial. So the rest of the stuff as we went through, so recreating the logo in this top left-hand corner was as simple as putting their logo underneath it and using the vector tool to trace around. These uh, icons on the right hand side, I took a screenshot of them and added them into Sketch and then built them just by uh, heart, just over the top of the, um, the previous image, just so I can make my own vectorizable elements that can grow and shrink. So these buttons, these buttons are super interesting. So inside this is this square box has this uh, half tone image that I've managed to grab from Google and I've turned it down to 17% opacity and, and masked it. So it's hanging off the edge here. We've got a, uh, this inside here is a custom built shape inside the masked button. And we've done the same over the other side here, a line that runs across there. That's actually, you can see is masked. Uh, by the rectangle itself. The font sits in the middle there, creating a really, really nice, interesting button. We've recreated these four elements down here. We've had to live trace this one, which hasn't come up too well, but uh, everything else around here looks really nice. Uh, we've got the button styles exactly as they've got it in game. And we've got our ready button over here. So this is built with a flat orange line with a glow around it uh, to make it to, to pop it out of the page and make it symbolize that it's ready. Uh, and we have the training button, which shares a similar mode picker that shares a similar aesthetic with these buttons here. Now I don't particularly like them. Uh, and I think this UI could be a lot better. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually recreated it um, myself and seen what, I've, what I'd done, I would do differently. So here it is. This is what I've decided. So I really put a bit more effort into the, these back flags here and I'll contrast it here with the, uh, with the side image so you can see it side by side. So right now in this, in this initial uh, screen, there's menus that are running around the entire screen. Uh, there are different sized UI elements uh, that don't work with each other and they're, they're jumping up and down the page. So what I've tried to make is a much more consistent and clean UI that really um, brings any skin gear um, or equipables that they've got and lets the user see them and then all the rest of the menu is kept minimal down the bottom. We've got some pullout stats around this left-hand side using the same kind of button styling as the uh, uh, Apex, uh, Apex Packs button. 
So this is a, a real similar element that you can see inside their stats menu as well. It says uh, their kills, their deaths, and their KD ratio. You know, that could be based on this character. Uh, that could be overall, but it's just meant to bring a bit more um, reason for the user to play another game uh, so they can increase their stats. You can even put daily challenges there or a, a news feed of, of what's going on. But I felt like the UI needed a little bit extra uh, to bring that in. So these bottom, bottom buttons here, you can see the play state is the active state uh, and legends, armory and store will all be clickable and then it will pull out that button, uh, very similar to, to how it looks here. And lastly, this Royale and training, you'll notice in this old button, you had a drop down menu. Now, because there's only two options, you shouldn't need to have a drop down menu. It's an extra, extra click that's not necessary. So for the time being, they may add more modes, uh, but for the time being, we've, we've given them the option of seeing everything that's in that drop down menu, and then they, the user can toggle between the two states. So what's inside this flag? This flag is a goodie bag worth of stuff. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it, and I'm gonna drag it off so we can have a look at what, what I've done to build this. So I've actually just grabbed a lot of different elements from um, just Google, just tra uh, transparent image searches. Uh, we found some vector splats to sit at the top of this. Uh, so usually that was sitting down to there, so that was at the top. And these here, they were all, if they were normal, they'd be set to a gray. We had them all as a black before. But then if you change the opacity to or the layer styling to hard light, uh, it'll take the light and suck it in from behind it, which is that red. And it really looks like it's bloodstained. We have a transparent grunge that's running through it that makes it gives it that dystopian feel and gives it uh, that really worn and dirty flag feel, uh, which m matches the vibe of, of Apex Legends. And then we have a silk texture. Now this silk texture, when it's set to normal, is a black and white silk. And that's to make the banner look like it's the light. You've got highlights and you've got shadows. And then that ripple down gives it that effect that it's been um, uh, flapping in the breeze. So we have that down to uh, what we had it before, which was about 17%. And we set 19%. And we set the difference, the opacity of difference. And that makes it look like it's, uh, it's actually part of the red here. Uh, we've grabbed the original Apex Legends logo that I built and um, smacked that in the middle. We have, uh, we've set the, the background color to the red that we, the Apex Legends use. And then down here, what I've done, this is a normal square but I've managed to find some torn paper uh, vectors, which you can see here. So that's what it looks like. And I've set it to subtract, so it cuts away from the flag. And then when you drag it back down here in part of the shape, it makes it look like the flag itself has all been cut down the bottom. Uh, yeah, so that's a, a, a lot of, um, a lot of little things and a lot of little filters you can add and little image overlays uh, that together come and create a real stunning flag. So look guys, this is free for you. I'm going to put this sketch in, um, in the description and you're welcome to, to grab it. You can see how I've made all the different kind of overlays. You can see how I've added them all together. Uh, you can really tear down my design piece by piece and you can figure out uh, exactly how you can make your own game UI. So thanks, guys. Uh, we'll catch up next week. See ya.